Today, I have another interview video for you from Grey Zone Warfare with Andre Spicer and Rick Lagnizzi. Andre is a highly skilled ex Special Operations Forces soldier, and we're going to dive into his global combat experiences and gain insights into how he would tackle the Rat's Nest mission in Grey Zone Warfare with his squad. As an integral part of the team at Madfinger Games, Andre ensures precise motion capture, contributing to an immersive and realistic gaming experience in Grey Zone Warfare. So, with all that said, I'll leave you with the interview. I hope you enjoy. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to continue to see the content I create. Most of all, thank you for watching, and I'll see you peeps next time. Hey, hey everyone. This is uh, Rick Lagnizzi, PR and comms director for Madfinger Games. And now we're here to do a second interview, and this time with Andre, uh, Sp a.k.a. Spicy. And he is a seasoned weapon and combat expert with 19 years of distinguished service uh, in the Czech uh, Special Operation Forces. And he's spanned... Uh, you know, various global assignments all over the place. And he's actually played a real pivotal role um, as our primary collaborator for animation data capture in the studio. So welcome, Spicy, and uh, we're glad to have you. Uh, welcome, Rick. Nice to hear you. Yeah, yeah, you too, man. Uh, you know, we'd love to know a little bit more about, you know, if you could tell the audience more about yourself and uh, you know what you do. Okay. So, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Andrew. You can call me Spicy or whatever. Uh, something about me, I used to work 19 years as a special forces, a Czech special forces operator. Uh, I quit my military career two years ago. And, uh, basically since I finished my, my career, I start to cooperate with the guys from, uh, Mad Finger Games. Uh, I used to, I'm also working for, uh, for a Czech company providing, uh, providing rifles. It's called Antrek. And I collaborate with the uh, companies as a you know, Gators, I wear uh, Black T Trident, Austria, uh, Zero Tech, Optics. Uh, the list goes on and on. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, well, how did you go about meeting Madfinger Games? How did you get the chance to work with us? Actually, uh, I'm playing in the band uh, here in Czech Republic uh, uh, with, uh, with uh, Thomas from... Uh, Mad Finger Games, and uh, a couple of years ago, he told me that uh, uh, the guys are thinking about the new project, new big project, yeah. and uh, so he told me that uh, there is no so much more information about that, but we will see. And after that, uh, he asked me if I would like to cooperate on this project, and uh, my answer was yes, definitely. Well, that's, I mean, awesome. I know you've been working with us for quite a bit now, and uh, I'm glad you guys met up. He's a, he's a good guy, Tom is. So as far as, like, what you know, joining the Army, like, what, what made you join the Army in the first place? What was the motivation? Uh, actually, uh, no one from my family was in the military before, so I'm, I'm the first one. And uh, I was always interested about the, the rifles and all the, all the movies like uh, Rambo, Commando, whatever. And uh, so there was a part of my life that I uh, switched a little bit more to, to military life. And I just went to uh, to recruitment center and I asked if I can join the army. And back in those days, uh, the the prostio of special forces unit uh, was some kind of like a heroes for me and I was not sure if I can join and go to Q course and but on the recruitation center they told me yeah they've got uh, like a selection in uh, in one month so I started to train a little bit more than before and uh, uh, I joined so that was a huge step for me in uh, in the 2002. Yeah, I bet. Now, fast forwarding to 2024, and we know you're an ex SOF. To get to the role that you've become, to the rank, like what, what does it take to get to your level of position that you know since you've left, you know that like the highest rank you've achieved? Huh? Uh huh. Okay. So uh, for first seven years, uh, my position was an 18 Echo, which is a Como guy. Uh, so uh, at the 2000. 10, 2011, I was kind of bored about this work and uh, 
uh, one of the officer in our unit uh, give me opportunity to start a new project which called uh, uh, 18 Foxtrot project, uh, which is well known for uh, um, 18 Foxtrot is an operator slash Intel guy. So uh, I said, yes, I would like to do this kind of job. So I participated on a couple of courses uh, abroad and uh, train a lot. So after the two or three years of, uh, of different courses, uh, I was a, I was a 18 Foxtrot, uh, one of the first 18 Foxtrot in our unit. Wow. Okay. So not basically all in all, not not easy to get to the position you did. Uh, yeah. So it was not easy. We were we were two guys in our unit who were like uh, chosen. Let's say chosen for this for this task and uh, we we did this kind of work till end of our careers. So my colleague is still continuing and uh, I quit in at the end of the 2021. Okay, 2021, got it. So now to kind of tie this into gray zone warfare, we're gonna do something interesting here and give you an idea of a mission that takes place in gray zone warfare and uh, you know, we have, we have a lot of quests and missions in the game, but we, we're picking one here specifically to see maybe even, um, like, your approach, the kind of gear you'd use and sort of this okay. sort of thing. It's it's called Rat's Nest. I'm going to describe the mission to you and then uh, break down, like, you know, again, what you'd use on the mission, how you would tackle the mission, if that makes sense. So, so it's called Rat's Nest. Here's the deal. Uh, it looks like those rats in the town get the memo and are still scurrying around and causing trouble. It's time to put a stop to their operations. So your mission is to conduct a thorough search of the town and its outskirts and identify the hideouts used by these punks. So you got to keep your eyes peeled for any suspicious signs of markings that might help you uncover them. And the main areas of interest are the town's northwest and southeast sections. So once you've identified the hideouts, uh, you need to investigate them discreetly. And then we need to gather as much information as we can before making our move. Mm -hmm. So you don't engage in direct confrontations unless absolutely necessary, and your primary objective is uh, reconnaissance and gathering intelligence. So I said that quickly. Yep. If yep. we can start from the beginning, the type of gear, uh, maybe even your choice of weapon, what would you do? How would you approach this? Okay, so it it seems to me that uh, it's a more like a long recce uh, patrol than a close quarter battle or whatever. So I would uh, choose lighter gear and I would try to get as much information as possible from uh, from the outside of the village. So I don't want to approach the village and uh, let the bad guys know, hey, hey guys, here I am. But I would like to sneak in around, uh, use uh, binoculars, uh, cameras, whatever, to, to get as much information as possible. Okay. So we know that, you know, ideally maybe you don't engage if possible, but what, what's your ideal uh, choice of weapon in a situation like this? Uh, definitely, I'm pretty familiar with the AR-15 M4 platform, so that's going to be uh, my my go-to rifle for a pistol. Okay. I love Glocks, so that's, that's my choice. And... Uh, I think that would be like a good for like a seven, eight magazines um, okay. and some special equipment for surveillance. Now, any particular modifications to the weapon for this mission or uh, you said surveillance? Um, you know, yeah, yeah, maybe I would love to use uh, LPVO systems on a, on the rifle, uh, one okay. to six, one to eight. It depends uh, which models is going to be in the game. Uh, or uh, some uh, uh, red dot sides and uh, and uh, some some optics who give me the better view, like on a longer distance. Okay, interesting. Okay, so let's try and picture this then. You know, in regards to infill, you're you're landing. Uh, you know, preferably on a, a helicopter because that's you know again what's in our game is the little birds, right? Yeah. Um, how how does that look as you're landing? Actually, uh, for this type of a mission, I would not use the choppers, at least okay. on not so close distance, because yeah, yeah. So if I 
I would use the choppers. Uh, my LZ is gonna be like, uh, let's say, three, four clicks away from uh, objective. Yeah. And uh, you, you know, for the walk, it's, it takes like uh, two, two, three hours to get there, which is not a big deal. And uh, hide myself in front of the enemies. It's, it's, uh, it's a crucial in here. Okay, so yeah, so once you arrive, you land, and you're on your way. Uh, we're just kind of curious. So once you're on the way to this point of interest, um, are you always 100% focused on the mission? Or does your mind ever wander sometimes when you're going between locations? Actually, uh, actually, I would be 100% focused on the, on the mission. And uh, as I mentioned before, so I don't want to I don't want to approach the village. So to get more information from from outside, definitely. OK, uh, once you start getting closer, how, how do you start to plan with your team? You know, obviously, again, in particular, this mission, you're trying not to engage. So so what's your strategy? Yeah, so it depends how many how many guys going to be in my team, but I would definitely establish how some say four. Four, you. okay, four, including me. Uh, I will keep uh, my group together, definitely, because if if we were like an eight, you can establish fire support or uh, machine gun uh, guys or or snipers to to help you out if uh, something wrong happened. But uh, four members definitely keep the uh, the group together and uh, try to establish at least two observation points uh, and try to get the information. So, so Spicy, you're, you're in a room and you need to find some intel. You need to find something important. Uh, there's a mess everywhere, you know, and so you're having a difficulty finding what you need to find. So how do you go about the process of locating the intel you need? Okay, so it always depends on the time. How much time do you have? Uh, if If... If I have enough time, so I will start search always clock, uh, clockwise. So, uh, and at the first, I will search from uh, one, one and a half meter to the ceiling. And I search all, all, the, all the room from one spot. I don't moving uh, inside the room. I will start from, uh, from the door frame. Then I will observe the room from the very same spot but from the from the floor to 1.5 meters uh, i'm searching for uh, for some booby traps i'm searching for uh, for intel as well so uh what what is interesting for for intel it's it's basically everything it might be newspapers thumb drives cds whatever and if for my security, I search it from this one very, very place, and then I can continue to search clockwise every single place that I'm thinking that might be some some interesting. Okay, now that's 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 great because that's what we wanted to ask next is like, uh, you know, when you enter this objective location, when you you need you know when you need to find intel, uh, you know, how 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 does that look? Like, what is the the process to get this intel? to leave quickly, what's your strategy? Actually, I would like to find uh, the best best places for for surveillance, for uh, observation, to see as much uh, village as possible. So uh, uh, during the planning, I would uh, like to, to see the map and the high grounds, low grounds, and try to find uh, the best place before I approach the village. So then what happens, because I'm sure not every mission is perfect, right? You, you, you feel a sense of urgency, you feel suspicious, uh, you know, or, or heck, maybe you make contact with an enemy. How does the plans change? I know they change quickly, but what, what happens? Uh, it depends on the mission. If the mission is only like uh, find a place where uh, the bad guys are hidden or something, it's always better to move out from the uh, break of contact and move out. So you have to plan also uh, contingencies, uh, how to how to disappear from the from the hotspot. Sure. Um, in regards to this ideal mission we're talking about, we're you know investigating them discreetly and whatnot. When you know when you an enemy and uh, if you make contact with an enemy, then how does that work in terms of and you feel like you can't leave? Obviously, you know it seems like combat then happens. 
Um, how, how do you guys manage that when it gets really intense? Yeah, actually, I would like to, to find the higher grounds because that gives me a little bit advantage uh, in, a, in a combat situation and uh, try to, to approach the woods or, or bushes or something to have a, have a ideal space for, to hide myself and uh, have a better place to, to attack enemies. What would you say when this is happening, the types of like emotions that run through you? You know, at this point, do you sense any like fatigue, stress, you know, any, anything that comes to mind, your experience? Uh, what comes in my mind if something like this happened? Yeah. Uh, mostly according to my experience from, uh, from the battles, uh, my brain start to work on, uh, on the drills. So I know what to do. I know how to shoot. I know how to uh, break a contact and move away from a contact. And all the guys in the teams uh, train train with me the same same system, same strategy. So uh, all of us start to work in the drill. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Obviously, you got to be very even keel, I would imagine, and you stick to your drills. Okay. So. What happens then when you tend to remove or withdraw your team and yourself from a mission? What does that look like in terms of, you know, extracting and, and actually do you even have any stories that you'd like to share with us uh, ab about these intense moments? Okay, so it depends on the situation. Uh, when I break, uh, actually, if it's possible during the contact, I will call for uh, air support if it's possible or artillery or whatever. Uh, if it's not a possible, uh, I would try to hide myself, move as much far as possible from the village and uh, call for chopper and move out. Okay. So what would you say in terms of the ratio of missions you have with enemy contact? Like how often do, do you actually come in contact with your enemy, you know, with all the missions you've done, you know? Actually, uh, it depends on the, on the missions, but it was like... Uh, three four times uh, during the during the one rotation which was a uh, six month long oh okay then so so we, we try actually sometimes we try to to find the place and like a little bit provoke enemies and right. uh we try to go to very uh dangerous places uh sometimes sometimes we had a contact sometimes nothing so Right. There was there was no no chance to uh, predict how how the mission's gonna be. Do you find that it happens more often than not that you're able to avoid enemy contact? Actually, enemy always have a advantage. They know the terrain, and uh, there were always some uh, marks uh, that we try to to be a little bit uh, to have a little bit goosebumps and uh, know that okay that it looks a little bit shitty and something. Something's gonna happen, so uh, not every time can uh, can avoid the contact. So there are uh, there are tactics how to avoid uh, uh, IEDs, uh, mines, or everything if you use the tracks for movement. But uh, you never know. You never know. It depends on the intel. Of course, of course. So now, just zooming out a little bit, is there any? story or two that you can share with us that you know that really stands out to you uh, i remember we actually tried doing this interview before you had a, a really uh awesome story you shared but i just was wondering if there's something you could share with us something that you can recall vividly um i think something that we'd just like to see your perspective on and how the mission impacted you mm -hmm. okay so uh it's a it's a story a story from 2019 when we were with uh, two u.s odas in the herat province and uh, we had a chance, me and three of my, uh, my colleagues uh, had a chance to, to go to different, uh, different province to help uh, US ODA to search a uh, very special place, very special village uh, where no, uh, no coalition forces were there for like four or five years. And uh, this place were, was known as a, it's like a hell on earth. So uh we were uh we approached the the village with the uh, two uh chinooki choppers 
Chinook choppers and uh, our LZs were were planned one click away from a village, but there was some misunderstanding. Uh, this shitty stuff uh, happened, so uh, our our landing zone was like a 2.5 clicks away from a village. So before we approached the village, all the all the locals were away from their houses. And uh, but we we have seen the uh, the marks in uh, in the buildings. The, there was a still fire burning, and uh, and the beds were uh, were used. Uh, so we moved we moved through the village, and uh, after the move away from a, from a market, uh, we was we was in a tick from one building, and uh, and the. Two two Afghanis were were shooting. They were dead on a, on a, on the very very place, and uh, two were badly injured. Uh, all of us we had a big luck because no one from uh, U.S. guys and the Czech guys were were wounded, and uh, so we we take a strong point in the in the village. Uh, we just make security. We call for air support, so there was a hellfire and uh, and the JDAM as well. And uh, we wait till uh, till the morning, and uh, during the morning start another fight, which consists of uh, of the mortar mortar firefight. So uh, the bad guys were shooting the mortars on our position. We were shooting mortar on their position. So uh, it was pretty tough day, and uh, during the during the evening uh, we moved to to new LZ for extraction, and move, we move out from the from the village. So the the injured and dead uh, Afghani guys they were uh, they were moved out uh, during the night with the uh, with the chopper with the medic chopper. Because our task was to continue in the village and find uh, uh, the place which was uh, suspected uh, that is a uh, Taliban uh, jail, let's say. Uh, okay. But we, we haven't had so many, uh, so many Afghanis to, to continue with the mission. So uh, the commander said, okay, so we, we wanna, we we're going to be withdraw from the, from the location and move yeah. back to base. Well, if we may just digress a little bit after that story, um, now, you know, you're retired, but well, you're still kind of busy actually. So I don't know if retired is the right word, but yeah. what are you up to these days now? Actually in these days, um, uh, I'm doing a lot of things. I'm running my own company, which called the Exof. Uh, I've got some, uh, I'm selling some, some, I, Swags, T-shirts, caps, whatever. Uh, I cooperate with the, with the Mad Fingers guys. Uh, working for Antrek, I'm providing uh, shooting courses for for my clients, and a uh, lot of things going on. Uh, I'm I'm preparing for for let's say new tasks in the in the future because uh, a lot of things going on. I'm, I'm going. I'm traveling to train in Indonesia and whatever so many so many things going on well okay so you've been through all this you you've served 19 years and a lot of missions and and now you know working bringing it back all the way to mad finger games and gray zone warfare how how happy are you working with this project how do you feel about the animations you've been capturing and as far as the realism in the game yeah yeah okay so uh I was I was pretty happy about about this opportunity, but uh, it it was kind of tricky. I had no experience with the with the with the games with the game world. So um, so the guys who like uh, helped me to to take me on on the on the gaming to the gaming world. Uh, we had a lot of discussions about the. How to do this? How to do that? How to manipulate with the rifle? So, uh, and I, I always push the guys to to do the things as much realistic as possible, and their task was the same. So uh, there were some uh, some negotiations sometimes, but uh, 
I think that the the the, that the player is going to be pretty surprised how how the game is real. Yes, I I think so too, and I'm I'm glad you said that because uh, it, it means a lot. You're working with the team, and to know that these these assets are they're not just like uh, copy and paste assets; they're actual animations. Yeah, yeah. So uh, so for me, it was a was a tough sometimes because there is a lot of lot of uh, weapons from Second World War and and older style platforms, and uh, it was not easy to train with these rifles to to show the best <laughs> I can. So uh, a lot a lot of a uh, lot of tasks were in front of me. And I'm pretty happy about that. And the uh, cooperation with the guys from Madfinger was yeah. was awesome. They treated yeah. me like a like a treasure. Well, Spicy, we just wanted to thank you for doing this interview with us and all the insight you. you've given us. Thank on you. The, we'll say Intel. Uh, you know, we really appreciate it, and uh, we definitely look forward to everyone getting their hands on Gray Zone Warfare to see these actual animations, these realistic animations captured in the game. Uh, so once again, Spicy, I know we'll talk soon. Uh, Appreciate it. And uh, everyone who's watching, always remember, every move matters. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you for your time and enjoy the game.